Welcome back to another tabletop review. Today we'll take a look at the RG26 25 caliber semi-automatic pistol. This is the ROM Industries RG26 or Model 26 25 caliber pistol. RG Industries was established in Miami, Florida and went out of business in 1986. Check the internet and you'll find the RG26 holds the dubious distinction of being the worst of the junk guns or Saturday Night Specials of the 70s and 1980s. ROM Industries was a German tool manufacturer. They also specialized in the manufacture of cheap revolvers. It was a ROM Industries revolver used by John Hinckley Jr. in his attempt to assassinate President Ronald Reagan. When the U.S. banned uh, imports of small firearms in the late 1960s, ROM Industries moved its production to Florida. They developed several semi-automatic pistols, including the RG25, the RG26 25 caliber pistols, and ROM RG8, which looked identical to the RG26, but was a blanks-only pistol. And they also developed the larger RG42 25 caliber pistol. While the RG26 appears on the surface to be a fairly inexpensive yet maybe adequately made firearm, RG firearms overall earned a reputation for substandard internal parts and overall poor design, which in the case of the RG pistols, especially the Model 26, were susceptible to catastrophic safety failures, at least according to what you can find on the internet today. Let's make sure this gun is cleared first. And by the way, if you enjoyed this review, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. I'm a bit of a collector and I really like these uh, small mouse guns. I find them and their history fascinating. I'm always on the outlook for anything unusual or representative of the time when these little guns were very popular. So when I first saw this pistol in the used gun display case of a local gun store, it got my attention. With a price tag of about $100, I thought it might just be another junk gun, but this wasn't just any ordinary junk gun. Once I realized it was an RG, I became very cautious. I like to collect, but I also like things that actually work, and the RG pistol's negative reputation was legendary. I'll admit, I didn't know anything about the RG26 model specifically at the time, except that it was supposed to be the bottom of the barrel of Saturday Night Specials. Although quite dirty, the gun was complete. It seemed to be in pretty good shape mechanically. The action seemed a little gritty but functioned okay and the store was eager to accept my offer which was well below their asking price. Perhaps I should have offered even less. So here it is, the RG26. And given its reputation as the worst of all Saturday night specials or junk guns, I think it's fair to ask the question, will it even fire? Will it work without jamming? I've heard these RG pistols called Jamomatics due to their frequent jamming problems. And will the safeties fail, as these guns are well known for? And could I hit the side of a barn with it? These guns were not known for their accuracy. Now, I do own a number of 22 and 25 caliber Saturday Night Special uh, pistols, and at least a couple of them are indeed really, really chunky guns. So I wondered if the RG26 25 caliber pistol is truly the worst of the worst. In my view, my Jennings 22, followed closely by my Sterling 300 25 caliber, would be hard to beat as the absolute worst of the worst pistols ever made. To be honest, the RG26 didn't appear to be as junky as its reputation suggested. Uh, as I disassembled it, cleaned it, oiled it, everything seemed in good shape. The striker and firing pin reminded me of other Saturday Night Special guns I own, not of the highest design or quality, but the bore was shiny, and there was hardly any slide wear or any of the typical signs of use. Even the magazine showed no scratches. Having found dried grease but no powder residue, I wasn't sure this gun had ever been fired once cleaned up. This gun's finish would suggest that it had been handled a bit, but not to the point of wear given it's 35 or more years of age. The fit of the parts wasn't great, but appeared to be okay, and everything seemed to function smoothly. It isn't a gun of great craftsmanship, but it's much better than I had expected. Given the abundance of negative references to the RG26, I was surprised at the lack of actual first-hand accounts or videos, either positive or negative, my research on the internet for information on the RG firearms turned up a lot of articles and reviews of ROM revolvers and even the RG42 pistol. But specifically on the RG26 pistol, I could find only a few shooting videos and one on disassembly. 
and only a handful of articles mentioning the RG26. In fact, two of the videos just basically demonstrated failures to feed and jamming. Mostly the concluding perspective of the RG26 was that it was basically the worst of the RG products and perhaps the worst of all Saturday Night Specials. That's a pretty strong statement. I also saw statements that the gun was made of recycled pot metal, which turned out not to be true. And a statement that the RG26 was the worst of all the Ring of Fire Company guns, which could not be true given that the Ring of Fire Companies were all related to the Jennings family line of guns located within the Southern California area. The RG26 was a German Florida gun. So actually holding one of these little guns in my hand, I began to wonder what else might not be true about the RG26's reputation. Now at the same time, I also came across a 2010 article on the ROM 26 38, 38 Special Revolver that I thought did a pretty good job of not only defending the, that model but also brought up what I thought were pretty good arguments regarding how sometimes we overreact in our evaluation of inexpensive firearms. I'm guilty of that myself. So it occurred to me that since I could find no actual in-depth reviews of the RG26 or collaborating evidence, perhaps I ought to tackle that challenge. If the RG26 is as bad as its reputation, I should find some evidence of that in my personal review to back that up. Or, if its negative reputation is exaggerated, perhaps I'll find evidence of that too. Now to be fair, I'll acknowledge that a firearm's reputation carries much more weight than my observation of just one gun. And the RG26 does have a notorious reputation as a junk gun. It would be unwise to completely ignore that. In the case of Saturday Night Specials, the poor design, inferior materials, and substandard manufacturing practices almost guarantees that it's more likely that failure is just looming ahead. So the question is when? That's one reason for them being called disposable guns. My advice for anyone who owns one is don't overwork it. The odds aren't with you in the long run. Now, if you've watched many of my other videos, you know that I try to point out a movie connection for firearms if I can. As for the RG26, there's nothing that I'm aware of, but the RG8, the blanks firing counterpart of the RG26, was used in the 1986 Hong Kong action film Royal Warriors, also known as In the Line of Duty, in which security guard Michael Wong carries his weapon in an ankle holster as his duty weapon. Of course, the irony being that in real life, it's actually a gun that only fires 8mm blanks. And again, a blanks only firing RG8 was used in the filming of the 2003 French film, Crime Spree. Now, I already stated that this was a used gun and there was nothing that came with it, so I can't show you anything, but it's my understanding that the gun originally would have come in a cardboard box and may have come with an additional magazine, perhaps as an option. The RG26 is a striker-fired 25 caliber handgun with no exposed hammer, essentially making it single action only. The slide must be charged in order to be fired. There's no magazine disconnect, which means the gun can be fired with the magazine out. The gun can be charged without the magazine inserted. The slide should remain open after the last round, and you must remove the magazine to release the slide. The frame and slide appear to be made of a non-magnetic alloy with steel inserts, probably zinc and aluminum alloy of some type. Look closely and there are machine marks here and there and it's got less than refined polish finish but uh, it's fairly durable black coat. It's still in good shape on this one. And look under the grips and even uh, inside the slide looks better than I expected for a cheaply made pistol. The barrel is two and a half inches made of steel. The mag release is European heel release here. The magazine is six round made of steel. The sights are built-in fixed. There's a frame safety that uh, appears to block the trigger action. Length is five and a quarter. Height is three and five eighths. Width is one inch. Unloaded weight is 15.25 ounces. At the range, due to its reputation, I handled this RG26 very, very carefully. I'm usually okay with dealing with the uh, heel mag release, and this one works pretty well. Press it, and the mag begins to move out until you release it, which stops the mag from falling out. Then you can easily remove the mag. That's typical uh, for heel release mags, but this one feels a little loose. Loading the magazine is fine. 
These are snap caps that I've loaded in for demonstration purposes. I decided on trying Blazer 25 Auto 50 grain full metal jacket rounds first. I've had a lot of problems with these Blazer 25 Auto rounds in the past and if the RG26 would cycle these, well it would really say something about it in terms of function. Pulling back on the slide was easy. The gun felt okay with the first round solidly loading into the chamber as it should. The RG26 feels okay in the hand for a small gun. The extended magazine allows for a good two finger grip on the gun. The sights are actually larger than many of my small guns offering a fairly good sight picture for the size of the gun. The trigger take up and pull is short and fairly light. Maybe six pounds. Reset is short. very short, better than expected. There's a very little recoil as might be expected with a 25 caliber gun. All round cycle to this gun as they should. The operation of the RG26 is actually fairly smooth. That was a bit of a surprise. I began to smile. The slide locked back with the last round fired. Good, I thought. However, I soon found out that it was only because the slide seemed to get hung up on the magazine follower so that I had to carefully pull back on the slide while releasing the heel mag release. Not easy, rather awkward. My smile went away. I reloaded with Winchester 50 grain full metal jacket target rounds. Although I prefer Stella and Billet at $2.50 a round, I decided on the Winchester 25 auto rounds, which have worked out okay in the past. Again, the gun fired as smooth as can be. No problems firing at all, not one. Accuracy at 15 feet was really good. Again, not what I'd expected. My smile returned. Sorry about the camera angle, one of the problems of trying to work with two cameras at the same time. To be honest, this gun reminded me a bit of my Bryco 25 that I reviewed earlier. Only to be honest, better. Not a great gun, but it seemed to work as it should. And it felt pretty good in the hand. The action is still a little gritty, but light and smoother than expected. Following my own advice about not pushing it with this gun, I ended my time at the range with only 100 rounds being fired through the RG26. But I hadn't experienced a single problem, really, not one. But at more than 90 cents a round, that seemed enough for what I needed at this point. I already paid much more for ammo than I paid for the gun. According to reviews of the RG26, the slide has a tendency to crack, break, and fly off when firing. That's pretty serious, but difficult to test on one gun. There are also statements about the gun accidentally firing when the slide is racked or if the gun were dropped. But firing when the slide is racked and the safety is either off or on would be bad. Could I get this gun to fire accidentally with or without the safety on without pulling the trigger? Loading the RG26 with snap caps and maintaining a reasonable bit of safety and care for the gun itself. I tried everything I could think of to simulate a condition where the gun might misfire such as repeatedly racking the slide. I even tried hitting the gun with a plastic hammer on different areas of the gun to simulate being dropped. I know that's not the same as being dropped on a concrete floor, but I was only going to take this so far. Obviously, this is not a conclusive test, but no matter what I did, I could not get this gun to fire on a snap cap without pulling the trigger with the safety off. I understand that that's not irrefutable proof that of this gun's safety, nor does it discount the many reports of failures, but I still thought it was interesting. As for cons, I already mentioned my problem with the slide getting hung up on the magazine follower when empty, so that I had to carefully pull back on the slide while releasing the heel mag release. And the slide release itself is just a little awkward. A slide lock would have been helpful as well. Takedown of the RG26 takes patience and practice, so expect some frustration there. But the biggest con for the RG26 is its poor reputation. The reports of catastrophic safety failures can't be ignored. As such, you should approach this gun with great caution. Also, the ROM 
company has been out of business for more than 35 years, so keep that in mind. As these guns age, springs may need to be replaced and internal parts that were not well made in the first place will need to be replaced. In addition, as a possible pocket carry weapon, the RG26 at over 15 ounces is also quite heavy compared with the more reliable and capable Ruger LCP 380 at only 9.6 ounces or the Smith & Wesson Bodyguard 380 at only 12 ounces. But more importantly, in my opinion, the 25 caliber round is just really inadequate as a defensive caliber. If you're going to carry for defense, be aware that although it might be more reliable than a rimfire 22, ballistically it's not much of an improvement. Some argue it's no imp improvement, and it's certainly much more expensive. And let's face it, at a dollar or more a round today, that's just way too expensive to operate. Well, the biggest pro about the RG26 is that you can probably pick one up for next to nothing, as this one would attest. And possibly, there may actually be some out there that still function reasonably well. As with many of the Saturday Night Special guns, because these guns were so cheap originally, many were bought by people who knew nothing about guns, but thought they should have a gun. That means there are guns out there that have never been fired, which is probably is a good thing, and can be found in pretty good condition today, like this one. But again, be very cautious because there's a lot of real junk out there. Also, I checked on the availability of replacement parts for the RG26, and unlike some of the Saturday Night Special junk guns, I actually found some parts are still available even today, and prices weren't too bad for the RG26. Even magazines are available. I hadn't expected that. In the case of this particular gun, I've been taken a bit by surprise at how well this little gun functioned at the range. If I hadn't known anything about the RG26 or its history, I would have thought this was a pretty good little mouse gun. Really, it just functioned so well, and I can't argue with its accuracy. Takedown of the RG26 begins with checking that the gun is cleared first. Make sure the striker has been fired by pulling the trigger. Remove the magazine and put the safety on. To remove the slide, the trick is to hold the spring loaded takedown latch up from behind the striker guide during the process. While holding the takedown latch up here, push the slide back about a half to three quarters of an inch until it engages the striker guide on the inside. Lift the rear of the slide up and you can remove it in a forward direction. Be careful not to lose the striker guide. It's spring loaded and may pop off. Then you can remove the recoil spring. Removing the striker guide, firing pin spring, and firing pin may require a bit of fiddling. And there you go. Reassembly is basically in reverse order. We're going to begin by returning the firing pin first, firing pin spring, then we'll return the recoil spring, and then we'll return the slide to the frame. That's it. As for price, for perspective, it's my understanding that some of the early RG guns sold for as low as around $10 new in the late 1960s. That would have been equal to about $81 today, so even back then, they would have been really cheap for a new gun. And in many cases, with these guns, you got what you paid for. Today, a used RG26 at auction could sell for as much as $200, and to do so would be outrageous in my opinion. The risk is just too high that you aren't going to find a good one. Recent sales data is scant, but that which I could find shows most sales of the RG26 this past year going for between $100 and $120. Now before we end today's video, I'd like to remind you if you haven't already, be sure to like, share, and subscribe down below. And thanks for watching. Well, this review was based on a sample of one. 
Can I say that the results I experienced reflect the true nature of the RG26 pistols? Probably not. While I can't dismiss the RG26's reputation, neither can I ignore the experience I personally had with this 35-year-old little gun I picked up used at a local gun shop just a few weeks ago. I'm certainly not suggesting that the RG26 is a great gun. And I'm not saying these guns are not cheap. In fact, what makes this gun a collectible item for me is indeed its horrible historical reputation. Worst of the worst. An heirloom piece it is not, but from what I can see from my personal experience, this RG26 is simply an inexpensive gun that appeared to work reliably and smoothly through a couple of boxes of ammo to demonstrate pretty good accuracy. The reality is that guns like the RG26 were made cheap and not expected to be of heirloom quality. Remember what they sold for new. At the same time, they were certainly expected to function, to do so safely and dependably for their owners, but their time to failure could not be expected to match that of the higher quality manufacturers. Okay, the big question was, is the RG26 actually the worst of the worst of all Saturday Night Specials? In my opinion, I can honestly say absolutely not. From my personal experience, the Jennings J22 still earns that title as far as I'm concerned. With the Sterling 325 caliber not far behind. Based on its construction, I'd even have to say that the RG26 might be better than the Jimenez or the Bryco uh, 25. In fact, I've even owned some old revolvers that were worse and more risky to fire in my opinion. So no, while I'm not saying the RG26 is a great pistol by any stretch of the imagination, I can't award it the title of worst of the worst. Of course, this is just my opinion. You know, as a collector, I actually sort of like the RG26. It feels good in the hand, it works smoothly, and has had no problems at all, and is pretty accurate. Really, for an old cheap mouse gun, it seems pretty good. Sorry, but I like it. All right, now, for a lot of people who may have inherited an RG26 or bought one cheap, what should they do with it? Well, let me just say that I'm not a fan of the 25 ACP for self-defense, but it's better than nothing and so is a 22 for that matter. Now, that being said, I also feel strongly that you should practice with the firearm you expect to use and to do so frequently. So consider that the 25 caliber ammunition for one of these has been hard to find at local stores and really expensive if you do. And regardless of how well this gun has performed, you can't ignore the reputation of the RT26. It's just not stellar. And if you use it frequently, it may not have great longevity. So the RG26 isn't a gun that has much real value in the market and probably never will. So realistically, my suggestion for a self-defense solution is that you see if you can trade it for a more reliable, more effective yet inexpensive small gun like a used Ruger LCP 380 or Smith & Wesson Bodyguard 380. And if you're absolutely set on having a low recoil pocket size 22 caliber pistol, consider trading for any of the newer inexpensive 22s out there still in production. I recommend saving up a few bucks to get something reliable, inexpensive to operate, and well supported. The good news is that today there are quite a few better options out there to choose from. And remember, any weapon you carry is better than the one you left at home. Thanks for watching. Hope you'll be back for my next tabletop review. Until next time, stay safe.